Okay, we're live now. Hello. Hi, my name is Andrea, and this is Verbling.com. This is a class about advice columns. We will be looking at people's personal problems that they wrote about to the newspaper for an advice columnist, a writer for the newspaper. Um, they wrote these problems to the newspaper so the columnist could give them advice on their personal problems. So we will be looking at some personal problems, trying to uh, give advice to the people, and then we will also look at um, the actual advice that was given. So we have Vincenzo. Welcome to class. Hi, teacher. How are you? Hi. I'm good. How are you? Thanks. Good. Good, good. good. <coughs> and we have Trang. Welcome. Um, <coughs> yeah. I I can hear you, but it's kind of quiet. Yes. So uh, maybe you can look at your microphone settings. Um, we have Gabriel. Welcome. Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? I'm sick. You're sick. Yes. What are you sick with? What kind of disease do you have? Uh, I'm cold. I'm cool. I don't know how to. Say you have it. a cold. Yes, yes. Hello. I'm sorry. I guess that's one benefit of having a class online is that I'm not going to catch your germs from your cold. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> good. Well, I hope you feel better soon. Yes, yes, I feel good. Okay. Enough. Okay, good. Well, I'm glad that you you made it to class even though you're sick. <laughs> okay. Sounds like some people get a cold and then they lose their voices. They can't talk, so I'm glad that you haven't lost your voice and you're able to to talk yeah. with us about advice columns today. And we have Michael, welcome back. Yes, hi. Hi, and Anne? Hi. Oh, it's, it's Roman. Roman. Yes. Oh, you, you guys are switching it on me. Yes. <laughs> I don't know which yeah. one it's going to be. Okay, okay, Roman, welcome. Good to see you. Good to see, good to see you, too. Okay. So this class is about advice columns. An advice column is a part of a newspaper. Um, in America, we have a lot of kinds of advice columns. Um, if you have, if you write a letter to an advice column, you are writing about maybe a personal problem you have or a problem that you have with another person uh, or a relationship problem. Those are very common things that people talk about in advice columns. You send a letter, or maybe in this day we also send emails. You send an email to the advice columnist, the person that writes for the newspaper, and then they will give you advice. They will tell you what to do or maybe make a recommendation and then they print it in the newspaper. So some of them are very funny, some of them are very serious. So in this class, uh, the document that you have, um, I don't have it, a link to it right now. Let me get the link for you. The document that is in the class is just um, the questions, the problems that people are talking about. Um, I do have the answers. I have what the advice columnist tells that person. But um, what we will be doing is talking about uh, what kind of advice you would give that person. And then after everybody talks about what they would tell that person to do, then we'll look at the advice columnist answer to that question. So I have the link now. Again, these are just the question part of the advice. We don't have uh, question answers, just questions. You'll see the answers after we talk about them. So there it is. Uh, I have a bunch of problems in this one, so I'd like to get started. Uh, does anybody have advice columns in their own country? Do you have? Do, do they have advice columns in the newspaper where you're from? Yes, yes. You have them. Okay. I have <coughs> Romania. Okay, Romania. Okay, so Romania has advice <coughs> columns. Maybe we have, but I don't know about that because okay. I never read the newspaper. Okay, okay. Vincenzo, do you have them in Italy? No, I mean, I don't advice think columns. No, okay. I don't think so. Perhaps in a particular newspaper, it is. Yeah. It maybe, but uh, I don't know about the normal. You, you are uh, saying about the normal newspaper, the daily newspapers also. Yeah, some newspapers have them, some don't. I think maybe um, some okay. of the bigger newspapers will have them okay. in there. Yeah, yeah, but um, we Americans really like advice columns, so this will this will help you with your your English and your problem resolution, solving problems, solving personal problems. So uh, let me get this up on the screen for you. We will read through the problems, and then you'll tell me what what you would tell that person. This is from an advice column called Dear Abby, and it 
it was a um, very very long running advice column. It was um, in the papers for very for many years. Um, the lady who was Abby, that's not her real name, but she, her um, pen name is what we call it. The name that, she, that sh she went by in the newspaper was Abby. And so her column's name was Dear Abby. And um, she died, I think recently she died. I think This says my microphone's off, but I think you guys can hear me. No, it's okay. Um, Long just has a screen share or something. That's really weird. Long, what do you have there? You, I see my video in your picture. That's really strange. What are you how doing are you, there? How are you doing that? <laughs> He's okay. sharing your yeah, his page. Yeah, he, he has, has a screen share for his icon, his, his avatar. That is the weirdest thing I've seen all day. <sighs> okay. We have the document, the PDF. Yes, I, I put it in the verbling chat. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. But we can see from the PDF. Yes, yeah, you will see. Um, I will put it on the screen in just a second. Mm -hmm. I'm just confused about Long's picture. <laughs> I don't know why it looks like that. <laughs> Long, are you there? Maybe he's not there. I have never seen that before. Anyway, we'll go on. Maybe maybe it'll change. All right. So this is just the question portion of Dear Abby columns. These are real people that wrote into these columns, and was, they were looking for answers. They were looking for advice. So the first one, also you'll notice that um, they all start with Dear Abby, their letters, and then they don't, they never use their own names. They give themselves a nickname. So here, yeah. this person's nickname is Mama Bear in New York. So they'll often say mm. where they're from, but they won't say their name. Mm. So uh, I would like uh, Vincenzo, please read this letter to Abby. Mm -hmm. okay. Dear Abby, I was picked on a bully and bullied as a child. I was very insecure and dealt with low self-esteem. Through counseling, I was able to overcome these issues to become a successful wife and mother. My question is, how do I prevent this from happening to my children without being an overprotective bear of a mom? Mama bear in New York. Yeah, so if somebody is a mama bear, it is a parent that is overly protective. They mm. they try to um, to uh, solve all of their child's problems. So that's what. Excuse me. Said. Excuse me, Lisa. But the first sentence, I was speaking it on and bull bullied. 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 Bullied as, as a child. But uh, this is referred to a. When she was a child, in a, in a moment of this life. Yes, when this person, the person writing the letter, said, when I was a child, I was picked on and bullied. Yeah, because as as a, uh, as a child. Uh huh. So when when I was when I was a child. Yes. Yeah, or not? Yes. Okay, okay. Yes, when I was a child, I okay, was picked on a, and yeah, bullied. It's not clear if she's she was bullied when she was a child or when she was more mature. Yeah. No, yeah, it's it's talking about her when she was a child. Okay. Okay. But what is the meaning picked on? Picked on means that somebody is bothering you. So, okay. if, yeah, pretend you're a child at school and there is another child that is always teasing you. Mm -hmm. That's another word for that. Or they are making fun of you. They are making a joke out of you mm -hmm. um, and you don't like it. So being picked on is negative. So if somebody's picking on you, they are giving you a hard time, that's another way to say that, um, and you are, mm. um, you're not happy about it, somebody else is, is making you into a joke. So maybe they're playing jokes on you. Um, it's kind of the same as bullied, uh, it comes from bully, to bully, mm. yes, you bully yeah. somebody, yeah, that's a a big problem right now with in schools if you bully somebody else then you are yes, you yes. are really making them miserable maybe you call them names you call them bad words or maybe you fight them maybe you yes, beat yes, them yes. up yeah yeah it's yeah. a kind of stalking like you know. yes 
Yeah, I think mean, maybe you, you follow them around and you, you always yeah. say mean things to them. Yeah, so this person did not have a very happy childhood because she was picked on and bullied. Um, because of that, she was insecure. She did not feel like she was safe. And yeah. she dealt with lo low self-esteem. That means she did not feel good about herself. Mm. Um, through counseling, what's another word for counseling? To, to help. Yeah, she got help. Is how you can say that. I got help from a psychiatrist. Yes. No psychologist. I'm yes, sure. we call that also therapy. Thera through therapy, yes. It's yes. So, this person had to go to a psychologist or a counselor or a psychiatrist. Get mm. they get, had counseling or therapy, mm. and they were able to overcome the issues. They they were successful in not having problems with this. They. Uh, this was a problem, but now she is over it. She doesn't have that problem anymore. And now she's successful as a wife and a mother. And so now she wants to know, how can I prevent this from happening to my children? How can I keep my children from having such a, a sad childhood? How can I, how can I um, uh, prevent my children from being bullied, from being picked on? So she's worried about the environment of the... Yeah, she's worried about her children. She doesn't she, want her children to be yeah, bullied. And the environment, yes. yes. Okay. Hi, Zaki. Uh, hi there. Hello. Hi, Andrea. How are you doing? Doing well. How are you? I'm doing good. Good, good. We're reading advice columns today. We we're just looking at this first one here. Uh, it's about a mother who had not a very happy childhood because she was bullied and picked on. Um, she was able to get over it. She was successful as a wife and a mother because she got some help. She had maybe a psychiatrist or a psychologist help her to deal with her problems. And now she is worried that her children will also become bullied or mm. picked on. She does not want her children to have the same kind of life that she had as a child. So I do have a document that has the answer that Abby writes to Mama Bear in New York, but I would also like to hear what you would tell this person. If you had an advice column and somebody wrote you a letter like this, what would you tell them? Uh, Anne. I think it's very... Or, sorry, Roman. It doesn't matter. I think it's a very difficult question because uh, mm, I think child of this mother can be uh, normal because uh, I, I don't mean not normal maybe. actually she has a problem and she can't so uh, could solve it and she go through therapy and I think the best decision for her to to give her children to uh, therapy too because she can't uh, solve this problem in the past and definitely she will not be able to do it in the future. So for her the best decision is only therapy. Because she don't have, she doesn't have own experience. She can't advise something. No. Okay, so your audio was a little bit strange in there, so maybe the sound, maybe I didn't catch everything, but you're saying that um, maybe therapy for the kids could help to help them deal with it when it happens or if it happens? Yes, yes. I okay. think that's only uh, the only one decision. It's uh, therapy. Therapy. Okay. Uh, Gabrielle, what do you think? What should she do about her kids? Um, wait a second. Uh, use another from here. I'm not. Uh, I wasn't here. Oh, okay. Okay, so you'll. Sorry, sorry. Okay, that's okay. Uh, Long, <laughs> what would you tell this person? Long, are you there? I don't think I've heard you talk yet today, so maybe you're having a sound problem or an internet problem. Okay, Michael, go. Um, what do you would uh, advise um, Mama Bear in New York? Yes. So I would advise her uh, um, like to 
to do not worry. This is first, second one to just to say to her chat to no. So uh, she doesn't specify who is uh, her ch child, uh, man or woman. Yeah. No, it's, well, uh, she has children. We don't so, know. That they're so boys how would they say that to say to their child? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Their child. Yeah. Okay, to say to their child that if you have a problem in your school where you study, uh, immediately come to me and um, like uh, tell me about that. Um, a, a minor problem, for example, if someone like says to you something, a bad thing, or maybe you do not feel comfortable, come to me and say about that. This is first. And second one, she can uh, like, if she uh, so... Uh, uh, anxious if she's so worried about that that may happen if she's very like uh, p paranoid or something like that she can uh, do you know this word uh, paranoid. paranoid yeah like uh, she cannot uh, get uh, from their mind this uh, problem like can, can happen she can go to uh, that school where the child is studying to talk with like teacher of the child to say like look uh, if you see something uh, wrong uh, immediately call me uh, right away so if you see him and to say to her child uh, to uh, their child like to to talk every day with that child if she's so uh, anxious about that it may happen and that's all all yeah. will be okay yeah, so having good communication with everybody is a good way to prevent things from, even if there is a problem, prevent a problem from becoming really serious. Yeah, Maybe because too. it's all about like, uh, the, uh, her child come at home and uh, if no one will ask him, uh, him, her, uh, they will not tell anything. So, But if she like will come and say, hey, how are you, things like that, and... Uh, uh, she will uh, know about that maybe in three days after what happened and she will prevent this. Yeah. We're losing people in our Google Hangout. I wonder if there's that's a coincidence or maybe there's a problem with the Hangout. I'm not sure. If I go away, I will come back. So, just in case. Uh, Tron, what would you tell this mama bear in New York? Uh, yes. Uh, first, I uh, think I would tell her that um, don't, don't worry too much about her children because each child has his or uh, his or her own strength. So uh, uh, sometimes picking on uh, bullying is uh, in uh, limit in limitation can help the children become stronger. And a uh, second, uh, the mother should. Uh, be friend with her children, so uh, so that uh, she can um, maybe she can uh, tell her children about her childhood and um, ask her child to uh, share with uh, share with her something happened with uh, school or with uh, um, with uh, his or her friend. Yeah, yeah, so those are good points. So with, uh, maybe if a child experiences um, something like that, getting picked on, that can cause them to be stronger, but still you, there are different ways to, to prevent that and to keep that from becoming a very big problem. Good. Vincenzo, you have children, right? What would no, you no, tell yes, us? Yes, I've cheated, but they are very, <laughs> I'm not very young, because they, I have 35 years old. So I I think I, I don't have this problem. Okay, but what what would you tell this person? Since you have had children, you you yes, know what yes, it's like. Yes, yes. Uh, well, I think that when uh, we have a child, a children is very what's it, um, subject to this problem because the he has no defense when when we when we are uh, he is when. We have a child. You no, know, the child is not little defenses uh, in front of other persons. They are more bully or something like that. So uh, the problem can be seen in a different way. In the sense, that, uh, yes, uh, you could see, could say to the, your child that uh, he should be stronger in front. Of this is more 
uh, stable, more, uh, how do you say, uh, is to be stronger. But, uh, yeah, be stronger. If, yes, but if the child can succeed in this, you have to find another environment that's more comfortable and so a, a serious, a more serious environment in order to change, in order to change school or to change it, or, or yes, uh, or advise your child not, not to frequent that place because of uh, bully. In other way, yes, you can change the environment, you can solve this problem by uh, talking directly to the, the director in order the, to stop this phenomenon. Yeah, okay, so you can help to maybe keep the, the situation from happening based on the, the settings, the setting where you are, and then also you can talk to maybe the director of the school. Yes, if, yeah. you want to, if you want to continue in, in that place, in that environment. Yes. Okay, Zaki, what would you tell Mama Bear in New York? Um, the child, you know, you know, you know, you mean the child might be so advice to children. The advice the, to the mother that is writing this letter. The mother. It's a hard yeah. question because I'm not, I'm not a mother. But anyway, just to, just think about what what you would do if you had chi a child that you were worried about in that way. Okay. Well, I think that children usually imitate what others do especially from the people that are close to them. For example, your father, your mother, and you are, if you are children and just imitate if he's doing something wrong, you do the same thing. So I think it's a good idea and uh, to, to keep ourselves in a good condition all the time, not getting angry so fast. And actually, in this case, they would learn this thing from us and they would not have any uh, problem with the advice. But if you don't just give your uh, children a piece of advice, pieces of advice and tell them don't do this, that's wrong, and you do it, they will do the opposite for sure because they see you do the opposite and they will not believe you anymore. And that is the case of, matter of fact, most of the problems came from. So if I worry too much about my son, you cannot say that you can you can change the world or uh, make another environment to live on, to live in. It's very impossible because you live with a lot of people with different nationalities, maybe or countries, and never tradition customs for sure. But we can say I like not children to have a bullied um, childhood, so. I can, I can give him like, uh, like talk to talk to him, talk to her, and uh, I should tell her not, um, I should tell her or him that you need to find yourself. Do you know what is your ability to do something? And uh, if there is a bad person, don't interact with them, or try to change them if you can. In this case, the, they will not only change their problems, maybe they can change the other problems without any psychologist persons. So that's what I think of the whole idea. Okay. That yeah. We, yeah. Yeah, can't control everything. But yeah. There are some yeah. things you can do. Okay, good. Uh, let's see, one more. Let's try Long again. Long, are you there? I think he wrote like in chat that he can speak. Oh really? Tonight okay. in Google chat. Oh yeah, I see that. Okay. All right. Sorry. I okay. can speak tonight. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's okay. Long. All right. So those were um, your advice. A lot of you guys gave very good advice. Let's hear what Abby actually wrote. I have another document that I will put on the screen. You can see what she said. Just give me a second. Here we go. Okay, change the view a little bit. 
Zoom. Okay, so this is what Abby tells this person. Dear Mama Bear, children with high self-esteem are less likely to be targets of bullies. More often, it's the child whose self-esteem is fragile to begin with who becomes the victim. So she's saying that if you, are, if you feel really good about yourself, um, people will not try to bully you as much. You are very, if you act very confident, people are less likely to pick on you or give you a hard time. But how can a child uh, be confident? They're a child. For example, I don't see any confidence in a child that is 7, 10 years old, 12 years old. They're, I think children uh, can be confident. Okay, I, but... Uh, <laughs> I don't they, know. Well, think, think, don't think so much about that. Let's, let's um, just think about like what they feel about themselves. So if you have, for example, if you have a child that has low self-esteem, they feel bad about themselves, maybe they don't think that they are worth very much, or maybe they, they feel like they are a bad children. Yes. But if the child is, is self-esteem, maybe you don't... We didn't have the problem. We should <laughs> no problem. No problem. We shouldn't have the problem. That's that's a question uh, uh, irrelevant, you know, or no? Can you ask that again, Vincenzo? If the child uh, had uh, self-esteem, we would have the problem. Yeah, it's it's well. If you have high self, <laughs> it's, 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 <laughs> it's stupid. It's stupid or not? <laughs> we are talking about a child that uh, I think less self-esteem, few self-esteem. Low self-esteem. So, uh, yes, we don't we don't need to um, go to the origin, the origin. But we we gave this for sure. So we have to resolve this problem in this moment with this situation. You understand what I mean? Yeah, so maybe not worry so much about what they feel about themselves and think about what is going on yes. right now. Okay. Okay. Yes. Well, this is this is just what Abby is saying. So Okay. Yeah. So this is just what she is saying. Like you can if you have a different opinion. I mean, this this is why this class is a lot of fun because you may have an extra you may have a a different thing you would tell that person, but this yes. is just um this is just what Abby this newspaper com columnist is saying. Um, so maybe if a, if a child carries themselves very well, or maybe they they um, they feel good about themselves, then bullies may not want to pick on them as much. They it's, it's they're not an easy target. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, more often, it's the child's it's the child whose self esteem is fragile, so they they have low self esteem. Mm. Mm. So if if they have low self esteem at the beginning, then bullies might think that they are more vulnerable. There, it's easier to hurt them. So bullies might want to to um, to give them a hard time. Um, so that person becomes the victim. That becomes the, a person with low self-esteem. Is, is possible that it's, that they could become um, bullied. They become the victim of bullies. Children learn self-esteem from the way their parents treat them. Tell your children you love them. Talk to them. Read to them. Listen to them. Give them your undivided attention. If you give someone your undivided attention. You are paying attention to them, and you are not looking at anything else. So you're not looking at your cell phone or your computer or your iPad. You are you are just spending time with your child. Um, and when you when they do something right, play, praise them. So tell them that they did a good job with something if they do it right. Mm. If you teach your children respect for others and how to be independent, they will be less likely to be bullied. When they are old enough to have unsupervised access to their cell phones and online activities, you should also monitor them for any indication that they are being harassed. Oh, that's another good word. It's another word for like somebody's picking on you or harassing another child. So uh, if children have cell phones and smartphones with big data plans, then it's um, that's something that you need to make sure you are being careful about because people can bully each other online as well. They can write very mean things to each other. So you have to make sure you're aware of everything that's happening with that. So that's what Abby, Abby's advice. You said so, a lot of things that you guys said already. Just making but sure she that... Don't say, she did not say that we need to supervise uh, children from the school. She said like uh, only uh, to supervise uh, when they grew up or, or it didn't. Sense. So it just says when they're old enough to have a cell phone. So you need to start to supervise, but uh, by that time you don't need to supervise. Well, I think just because she didn't say 
that you don't need to supervise. I don't think she's saying don't supervise. I think that's just something she didn't say in this one. And how do you measure a self-esteem of uh, ten, seven-year-old children? Uh, children. Well, you can Child. kind of tell. Like, um, okay, so I teach music. I teach, I teach seven, ten. As a parent. I was a parent. I, well, I'm not yeah. a parent, so I'm not sure. But no, um, but she said to Abby said to that. Parent. Yeah, basically, if you if you want to um, help somebody with self-esteem, it's maybe um, make them know that they are valued. Like they they are not worthless. They have worth. Um, make them helping them feel better about themselves. So as a parent, um, just making sure that the the child knows that they are important to you as a parent. That is a way to increase self esteem in a child. I think every person can uh, measure self esteem because, uh, uh, as for example, you can meet people who talk uh, very, very uh, confident and you know, oh, this person true self-esteem and uh, in the same way you can uh, measure children. Yeah, yeah, good. Because you have all experience. Yes. Another way to, it's uh, quite difficult to uh, bring uh, up uh, self-esteem children. If you don't have, if you didn't have in uh, the childhood. Yeah, sorry, your audio was a little bit strange there, Roman. Couldn't hear the last part of what you said. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we have um, Alexandra. Welcome to class. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Fine. And you? Doing well. I'm just looking at some advice columns. Uh -huh. So, yeah, so this is Abby's answer to it. Um, I want to, um, I actually want to go on now because I have, there are some more that I have in there. Uh, let me pull up the one that is only questions. Okay, so um, we have this really long one. We're going to skip it for today. Maybe we'll do it in another lesson. Um, let's do, okay. These two at the end are kind of funny. So let's do these. I think we have time to do both of them. Okay. Looking at this one here, it's the second to last advice column letter. And I would like, um, Zeki, would you please read this letter to Abby from Marsha? Okay. Dear Abby, my problem is my husband. He wears false teeth, hours and lovers. And he thinks it's really funny to take them out at parties and do Spanish dance using them as questions. Um, he thinks he is being the life of the party, but I'm burst to death. Should I keep him away from parties, or should I just tell him that he isn't funny? <laughs> okay. So, Marcia has a husband. He's wearing false teeth. Another word for false teeth is dentures. So maybe if you are old and you you have a lot of teeth problems, then you just you you have them remove all of your real teeth, and then you just get this set of teeth. Um, does it do? You, does anybody want me to pull up a picture of false teeth, or is that clear? So oh, he clear. doesn't have a, he doesn't has any teeth. He doesn't have real teeth, so he has to oh. insert at all. Uh, usually not. Okay. When you have false teeth, you usually don't have any. So, <laughs> so if you if you have false teeth, you have to take your teeth out. I'll just pull up a picture. It's easier to explain that way. So you have to um, take your teeth out of your mouth, and you you don't sleep with them in. Let's look. Let's look at a picture, guys. Something that help you to eat if you don't have a teeth. Yeah. Yeah. It's really important that we all know what false teeth are for this one. Is what they are saying, teacher. It. Yeah, hang on. And okay, also, please. if your teeth is not stable, you would to make them stable or standard. Yeah. yeah. So these are there's all kinds yeah. of false yeah. teeth. So you see that you just you insert them into your mouth, and yeah, yeah then you have that. So <laughs> so you can take your yeah. teeth out of your mouth <laughs> if you have false yeah. teeth. It, it sounds so real. Yeah, so... Sounds like... They use it, uh, them, like... 
Yes. Okay. <laughs> Vincenzo, can you tell us what castanets are? Uh, well, in Spain, it's very use, uh, very common to use castanet when they are dancing, you know? uh, especially yes. with women in some dances. I don't know if perhaps in Valencia or something like that. Yeah. I... Il, uh, uh, flamenco, perhaps. Yes. So you see a picture of castanets here. Yeah. Yes. So it's a musical instrument. You hold them in your hands, and then they make a clicking sound, and so you can play music with them. Yeah. So this guy is taking his teeth yes. out, and, and he's using face. them like okay. castanets. Okay. <laughs> I think so this fun. is my this is my favorite, dear Abby. Uh, we go back to our letter here. So at parties, he takes out his teeth and he he does a dance. He dances with them. He uses them like castanets. The wife does not like it, but he, this husband, he thinks that he is the life of the party. If you are the life of the party, that means you are the most fun person at the party. I so, the party. Yeah. So everyone's looking at him. Maybe they're they're laughing at him. And so he's he's making the atmosphere very fun. It's very festive. So he's he's the life of the party. He's bringing a lot of energy to the party. <laughs> Perhaps we must take the the wife out of the party. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the party. Yeah. Hmm. A solution it would be a solution. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because she's embarrassed, and there's another expression there. She's embarrassed to death. She is so embarrassed. She. Is um she's really humiliated. She feels like um she's she feels like people might make fun of her, and so now she wants to know: Should I keep him away from parties? Should I just not ever take him to parties because, the, or should I just tell him that he isn't funny? So okay, so we have this very embarrassed wife, and her husband. Is it? You have to substitute him with me, teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Do you do that, Vincenzo? No, no, no. It could be a solution. Huh? Should I keep me away from parties? <laughs> <laughs> Should we? Should I keep me away oh, from parties? Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Alexandra, what would you tell this woman? <laughs> That she is very happy to have such a husband. <laughs> she should be happy, yeah. It's important because to have someone that can make you laugh. She definitely has a good sense of humor. Uh, yes. uh, <laughs> but, <clears throat> yeah, I must confess that that may not look very uh, aesthetic. <laughs> um, <laughs> But it depends on uh, people around them. It depends on people who take part in these parties. So um, if they don't mind such jokes, then why not? Uh, I, I think like this. Yeah, yeah. So if, it's a, if you have a, a certain kind of um, crowd at your party, maybe they're not, they're, they like to have fun, they like funny things, maybe that would be a good yes. thing. It yeah, depends. but. Yeah. It depends on relations between people. If they are closely related to each other, I mean, if they are close friends who know each other very well, so they don't find it uh, embarrassing, they, they like it, so why not? But parties can be different. So if it's a corporate party, maybe that's not very suitable to take out your dentures and show everybody. Yeah, probably. <laughs> if it's very what you have inside, What do you have inside your mouth? So it just... <laughs> Depends on society, who is around you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Zaki, what would you tell Marsha? <laughs> Marsha, um, well, I agree with Alexandra about what she said, um, but there's something in standard that we should do. Like, there's something when you do it, it's like, oh, not good. Even if you're around good people, unforgettable. Um, we are uh, some of the Arab eat with their hands. If you came to the United States and you try to eat, eat with your hands, oh my gosh, what that man doing? That's really the awful thing. And they maybe will will, uh, will not let you doing that. So it depends on the way you live and others live with you. So uh, we can do you know these funny things. 
But I agree with Alexander Shesh is saying that we should not really, um, we should be with the atos uh, atmosphere if it's okay, okay. But yeah, it could be nice and funny for the others, but uh, for for the for Marsha, oh my God, she cannot accept it for sure. And I will tell her that if you have that kind of husband, just be uh, try to ask him nicely to not do in, in the this thing anymore, or try to have a mask or something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Put it on and cover your face like uh, Halloween bodies. In this case, it would work. Okay. That's what I think. Okay. All right. Roman, what do you think? What would you tell Marsha to do? I think problem in Marsha, not in her husband. So I advise her to drink to drunk the same amount of alcohol that uh, he <laughs> drank. <laughs> and don't worry about it. Uh, yes. Yeah, maybe she will relax a little bit. <laughs> yes, to be relaxed more, yes, to be more friendly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Vincenzo, what would you tell her? Uh, I would tell her to pay attention because uh, it could be something that she is going to project, 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 I do say project, uh, uh, toward his husband. Uh, the fear, uh, the embarrassment is, is hers. Uh, so he must pay attention to this uh, because uh, if does it, it could be also an embarrassing uh, situation no? in formal, if you are in a, a meeting very very formal yes it's very strange it's very funny you know it's not a good uh, way to but if you are um, if they are without friends I think it could also happen in this situation and uh, this fear, this embarrassment, she uh, should work about it, her embarrassment. You know what I mean? She needs to because be. She needs to look at how she how she feels. Maybe yeah, think feel, about yeah. uh, why she's yeah. embarrassed. Uh, her, her feelings, because it's not a problem for uh, her husband. It's a problem of uh, uh, for her. I would say. We understand it's her we, problem. It's her problem, yes. Okay. All right. Um, Michael, what would you tell Marsha? I would tell to, like, to say to him that uh, this is not uh, very nice, this is not something that uh, uh, he could do, so he should do something else, maybe like to learn something, to do something more beautiful, you know, something like that. And um, that's all. Yeah, maybe recommend he does something else. Yeah, something yeah. else, not necessarily with thieves, but uh, to take like uh, this real, uh, what is that, the name of this, uh, uh, castanets, to buy real castanets and to go to the party <laughs> and with real castanets to do this, not necessarily with thieves. And to, to give him uh, like a, uh, Present. Yeah. Yeah, to cast I got us. you a present. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and, uh, gi and uh, he will uh, do this with uh, real castanets on the party, and she will be uh, uh, happy. Yeah, probably because because he's using his teeth, that's what makes him embarrassing for her. So, yeah, maybe that's a good solution. Sure, but this is embarrassing. Like, you uh, remove your teeth and start to do this. Mm -hmm. This is uh, mm -hmm. funny. It's like he's uh, mm -hmm. silly. Yeah, seems very silly. Well, I think that the solution that he shouldn't take his teeth out from his mouth or it doesn't bring uh, the body usually dancing, drinking, not usually eating. So he doesn't have to have a teeth or false teeth or dentures in a body. That is the solution, and nobody would imp be embarrassed. Doesn't take it. Don't take it with you. Well, then he would have no teeth. That might look kind of funny, too. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you could just tell him to keep his teeth in his mouth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Strong, what would you tell Marsha? I uh, yes. I think uh, Marshall, Marshall should uh, consult opinion from uh, their friends. Um, if their friend uh, this 
agree with uh, his action. She just tell her husband that Mr. A, Mrs. B, or Mr. C uh, say that your action is not very, is not funny, and you should stop the option, stop the kind of action. And uh, if uh, their friends say that uh, it's very funny and uh, they like her husband's action, I think um, it's not necessary for her husband to stop this kind of fun. Okay, telling him to stop. All right, so... Uh, um, uh, yes, I think uh, first uh, she should consult their friend's opinion. Okay, maybe ask her friends, maybe friends that are at the party as well. Yes, friend at the party. If uh, if they like uh, her husband's action and they think it's very funny, I think there's no reason for her to stop her husband's action. And uh, but they uh, said to her that they don't like the kind of action. She can um, refer their opinion to tell him. That's Mr. A, uh, Mr. B, or Mr. C said that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, so we have a lot of uh, different things, different opinions on how to how to approach this man using his dentures as castanets. Um, this is Abby gives a very very short response, so you don't need a screen share for it. I will just put it in the chat box, mm -hmm. and you can read what he what she wrote. She wrote one sentence. Let him have a good time. I think it's hysterical. If something's hysterical, it's very funny. So she thinks that maybe the wife needs to relax. <laughs> that was the advice that she gave to this person. Yeah, but it totally depends on what kind of party it is. If it's like a black tie, a very formal party, and maybe um, it's for the wife's work, and she needs to impress her boss, then it's probably not a good idea to use your dentures as castanets. But um, in this case, we're not sure what kind of party it is. Abby thinks it's hilarious. So there's that one. And I have another funny one. I think this one uh, is kind of a joke, too. But uh, this Abby is a real uh, person? Yeah, it's a real person. But can be something like that, that she like writes uh, herself these emails, uh, these letters, and by herself answers. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's possible. <laughs> possible. Like uh, very weird, this uh, like about this castanets and uh, something like uh, absurd, yeah. something like that. Yeah, or somebody else was writing it as a joke. Yeah, as a joke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, as possible. Like uh, see what she wants or things like that. Yeah. Okay. Quickly, we have um, another one. This is another one where Abby gives a very very short response, and this reads. I don't want to appear conceited, so you don't want to appear, appear arrogant or full of yourself, uh, self-esteem that is too high. I don't want to appear conceited, but I'm forced to admit that I am one guy who has everything. Women are always flocking around me. That means he has groups of women around him all the time. They're telling, telling me how good-looking I am and what a marvelous personality I have. I'm beginning to find this pretty annoying and extremely tiring. I just want to live a normal, quiet life. How can I dissuade these hopeful females? So if you dissuade someone, that's the opposite of persuade, the opposite of convince. So he wants, he's saying that he's, he is very good looking and he has a good personality and he's tired of all these women coming up to him and complimenting him about it. And he's just, he's really annoyed by it, and he just wants to be by himself. <laughs> so Abby gives a very short response to this, and you see she says, keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. How can I convince them, how can I convince these women to go, to get away from me? Well, you can just keep talking about yourself like this, is what she says. She would never... Uh be persuaded by these birds unless if, the, if she knows him um, himself and that's it uh -huh. so yeah so this guy is um, is very very he he says he doesn't want to appear conceited but he actually sounds very conceited here so it sounds like he's um, he thinks that he is the best at everything and so 
the the best way to to keep somebody from being attracted to you is to act like you are the best in some cases. So that's that's kind of a joke there too. So maybe somebody wrote this as a joke. Okay, um, we actually have one more. I'll give you another one. We'll go up. Okay, we might not have time to have everybody say what they think about this one, but uh, we can get a few people. I meet my dad for dinner once a week, which we both enjoy and have done for years. Dad stays very healthy and enjoys running and biking, which I completely support and admire him for. The problem is he has started running to our meals. He sweats a lot when he runs, so he arrives at the restaurant literally, literally dripping. He then grabs a handful of napkins to wipe off and lifts his shirt to wipe his face and neck with it. Abby, he's so sweaty that he has dripped on the counter when he signed the receipt. So he's got sweat everywhere. He's making everything wet. I find this unbelievably rude, not just to me, but to the restaurant. This wouldn't even be appropriate in a fast food joint, so a place like McDonald's. Uh, but this isn't one. It's a nice restaurant where people are trying to enjoy their meal. I feel if he wants to run to our dinners, he should arrange to get there early enough so he can dry off in a bathroom and change his shirt. He insists it's no big deal and sweating is normal. What should I do? This is really getting to me, or this is really bothering me. I'm not happy about it. Disgusted in Seattle. So she's got a dad. The dad is very healthy, likes to run, and now runs from his house to the restaurant to meet her for lunch or dinner and he is sweat everywhere. He probably doesn't smell good either, but she doesn't say that. I'm going to assume that he also doesn't smell bad. So he's just, he's getting his sweat, his liquid all over the place. Does somebody have something that they would tell disgusted in Seattle? I think that, yeah. I think that um, everything takes its time if you want to run go to club and then if he got back at his home, take a shower and let her take their lunch but not doing everything in, uh, in a hurry because that's really terrible when it happens because you just want to do this and go do it and maybe you don't care about the others what do they think of you, what do they um, like that or okay. not. Sorry Zaki, I didn't hear anything, my sound cut out for a few seconds. Um, what I said that uh, you don't have to do everything in a hurry, in a fast way. You need to uh, have a schedule and everything in each time. Okay. So maybe That's he it. should plan that out some more. Somebody else, what what would you tell this disgusted person, very grossed out person, about what she should do with her dad, who was very sweaty in restaurants? She has two options. First is uh, to accept his uh, daddy as he is. Second one, to tell him like to do not this, to come normal to a restaurant. And, and third option, to do not go with him to a restaurant. So she needs to choose from these three options, what she likes more. Okay. That's yep. Yep. She has a choice. Okay. Three Anybody? Options, yeah. 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 Anybody else? Any anybody else? What they would tell this person? Yes, I think uh, the second one decision which Michael uh, said is the better because it's old people. Old people very very difficult to change. It's so <laughs> difficult. Vincenzo, do you agree with that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Vincenzo too. So uh, <laughs> I think the only decision is a uh, change uh, place to uh, for this meeting. Okay, yeah, maybe meet somewhere else. Maybe not a nice restaurant. Yes, okay. yes, in some um, uh, dif in uh, some different place. Okay. Okay, uh, Vincenzo, what do you have to think about that? What do you think about that? Uh, perhaps it, uh, it's good eating at home. If, if you don't accept this way, if uh, the, you don't accept your father in this way, you have to eat, you can eat at home without going to the restaurant. It's very simple. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you want to have a meal. 
Yes. Not, don't but go if, out. You want, if you want to go to a restaurant, you have to accept. The, that's a fact. You know, it, or perhaps you you have to fight with your father in order to. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's impossible. No, I think that there is a only a situation, or or two, or you accept to uh, stay to the restaurant with your father in this way, or if you want to be in public, you have to go to. Uh, have lunch at your house. I think that is okay. uh, yes. And Trung, what would you tell disgusted in Seattle? Uh, yes, because uh, she said that he should arrange to get there early enough so he can dry up in the bathroom and change his shirt. So I think uh, next time um, she can um, um, he, she can tell him to. Uh, Go to uh, the restaurant one hour earlier. Yes. For example, yeah, if she yeah. plan to start. Yes. For example, if she start to uh, have a dinner at uh, uh, 8 p.m., she can um, tell, him, tell him to come at uh, 7 p.m. because he has to wait. Thing. He has to wait, so he may uh, go to the bath bathroom to change his shirt. Yes. Uh, to have a then, shower. No. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. To have a, to have a shower in order to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, and, and if you go to a bathroom somewhere, and yes. maybe you're in public, you, you, it's not a whole shower, but you can freshen up. Is what we call that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. So Abby uh, told her advice to this person. Um, tell, she tells this person to um, offer to keep some towels and extra shirts in your car. So since you are driving to the restaurant, have some towels and shirts for him, give them to him, and send him to the bathroom to clean up. And then um, another thing that, she, another piece of advice, she said she could also offer to give him a ride to the restaurant. If, you know, maybe ask him to change his running schedule, and then she just, she just drives him to the restaurant so he's not so sweaty. So those are the two things that she said that, that he can do. With that, okay. So I had there was one other um, advice column letter in this document, but it was really long. So next time we do this, we'll do that one. It has a lot of uh, drama with a family with that one. But um, this was a good class. I I think you guys had a lot of good ideas, a lot of ad good advice for people with these. So um, uh, see if you can find advice columns in English. I think they're very interesting to listen to read because you read about people's problems with each other and uh, there are a lot of problems that occur in any country, any nationality too. So you can follow me on Verbling. Um, I have a new Facebook page. I'm putting the link into the chat box so you can contact me that way now and I'm available for tutoring as well. And um, this is my last lesson for today, but I hope to see you tomorrow. Thank you. Okay, take thanks. Care, Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Take Bye. care.